Welcome back, everyone. Uh, I'm Vandana Saxena Puria. I'm your guider of ceremonies for the IACC Pune Integrate 2021, which is in association or in partnership with Automation Alley. Um, just remember, there is a question box. So if you do want to ask any of our speakers questions, please do go ahead and do that. Go take your photo at the photo booth during our breaks. Um, but now, a very, very interesting session. While Industry 4.0 is taking off, no doubt, around the world, it's not always easy for a country at India's stage of development to just pick up solutions and implement them. Our next speaker, Himanshu Zadav, CEO of Gendermark, is going to take us through the challenge, um, the challenges faced by the developing economies and the potential digital solutions um, give us taking a human-centric approach. It's a fascinating approach, so let's hear more from Iman Himanshu now. Himanshu, over to you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Integrate. My name is Himanshu Zadav, and I am the CEO and Director for Gendermark India. First of all, I would like to thank IACC for organizing this wonderful event on a very important topic in the industry currently. Before we further, uh, before going ahead, maybe I can start by sharing my screen and give you a glimpse of what Gendermark India does and who we are and from what our roots are. Gendermark was established in 1989 in South Africa in a city called Port Elizabeth. We entered India in 2014 and established a base in Pune. Recently, we have also established a site office in Chennai in South of India. We have our offices in Germany and in USA as well. As a group, our turnover is 60 million euros and we have 150,000 square feet of global footprint. The number of employees is 650 out of which 230 employees are in India. The group focuses on powertrain, aerospace, catalytic converter, digital services and electric vehicles. Now you can see a brief of some of the projects that we have done in the recent past. I wouldn't go through the entire list, but it's important to understand what kind of company we are, what kind of projects we have done, and why now we have moved into the era of Industry 4.0 on our own. So as you can see here, we have developed several Excel lines for Indian and global OEMs from India. We have uh, developed and supplied engine assembly lines to Volkswagen, Skoda, Mahindra, ZF, Tata Cummins, and so on and so forth for end of lines as well. Our EV business is primarily thanks to Mahindra Electric who initiated with us in two, back in 2017 projects to make India's first power pack line and recently we have supplied EV lines to Dana TM4 as well. Catalytic converter is a very important aspect of our business and we are very proud to be India's only company who can make catalytic converter assembly lines in India for Indian customers and of course European customers as well. Now you can see some of the pictures of our recently executed projects. As you can see, we have a very strong core automation background in supplying turnkey solutions for our customers. While doing so, we realized the need to set up our own software development department so that we could address the concerns of our customers who were coming up to us asking to initiate the Industry 4.0 solutions at their end. Before we go into the Industry 4.0 solutions we developed, we have to understand the difference in a developing economy like India or South Africa and a developed economy. While we may know that the term Industry 4.0 initiated in Germany when the German government gave a go ahead to the global OEMs in Germany like Siemens, Bosch to develop solutions to further enhance the productivity considering the problems they faced. But our problems in India are a bit different. Our problems are an ever-growing population, a low literacy rate, a variety of languages and diversity in the languages, a lower per capita income, high crime and corruption, and a bit of lacking on the health and care side. To give you one idea, here is a, what you can see now is a population pyramid of a developed country on the left and a developing country like India. 
while you can see on the bottom side the number of people coming into the age of a working force in a developed economy like Europe in Germany is diminishing. Hence, there is an ever-growing need that very soon they will be having shortage of skilled manpower. Whereas on the right side, what you can see is we have abundance of young population coming through the ranks. This means that our solutions are necessarily to be different than what is being adopted in the West. Also, if we think of it, if we develop the, if we implement the solutions of a developed economy in India, we will face a further unrest. For example, when you have a labor issue because of high labor cost, a developed economy will go towards automation. Because of scarcity of area, they will go into making flex lines. Because of a high level of customization requirement, they can go and afford to make a very basic assembly line, but the product cost is going to be highly expensive. Now, if you bring these solutions as it is into India, we will have a definite increase in unemployment rate because of high automation. We will have, we will know, we will not need to implement flex lines because we have a possibility to enhancing on the lateral front and not going on with flex lines to keep the cost of the product low. And same goes for high customization means high cost. So we are going to make our products more expensive. To cater to these issues, we decided to develop solutions based on the problems we face. So for an unskilled labor problem, our digital solution is to recruit the right people at the right way using digital services, guide them properly in the local languages and visually so that we don't have to rely on a very high level of literacy in the initial days of the operator being recruited. With this thought process, we realized that our solution has to be human centric. And that's the reason why Gendarmark always decided let us now make our own solution. While we thought of making our own solution, we put down these certain basic principles of how we would like to proceed ahead and how our solution should be developed. These are our guidelines which have enabled us to create the right solutions for our Indian customers. As I mentioned, we have to have a human centric approach because that's what and that's based on the fact of our economy is also human centric. With this ideology, we brought in the convergence of the IT world and the OT world. We were already on having a strong expertise and experience on the OT side, but now by adding our own team to make the software solutions using cloud computing, SQL, .NET, we have now been able to bring these two words and with the convergence, our ecosystem called Odin was developed. Under the banner of Odin, we have developed already six solutions, Odin Workstation, Odin Maintenance, Odin Future Factory, Odin IoT, Odin Health and Odin Insights. Out of the six solutions, five solutions are based on cloud. That's where the strength of Industry 4.0 comes in. There is IoT, Maintenance, Future Factory, Health and Insights, which are cloud-based solutions, whereas Odin Workstation is an on-premise solution but it can also be accessed using the power of internet. The way we like to explain our audience is always through practical examples. Think of this line as a line in any industry, any factory, which has certain inputs of material, certain human elements who are doing the operations, semi-automatic machines and fully automatic machines over here as well. And in the end, there is an output. This process is supported by a maintenance team, by a quality department, by engineering, by HR, and of course, overseeing all of this is management. What we tried to do was put in our solutions in each area to show that eventually, when every area, every department functions together, then we are able to have what we call as a smart factory or a factory of the future. Let me deep dive into one of our critical solutions for the operator on the line called Odin Workstation. So Odin Workstation is what is mentioned here is a process security solution which consists of operator guidance, traceability and production planning. It has further three subdivisions or sub products called Odin Terminal, Odin Manager and Odin Line Watch. Odin Terminal guides the operator with visual alerts and process sequence. 
Coding Manager is used to set up the process and also to access the reports of real-time production data. Odin Line Watch is, for a, is a smart and on system for traceability and diagnostics of the line. That's how Odin Terminal looks like. And as you can see, there is a clear visual guidance to the operator, what he has to do, what process steps he has to follow. And interestingly, we can also do it in any local language of the region. Here's an example on the right side of the workstations in Mahindra Electric with Odin workstation on the assembly line for their EV vehicles. Odin Manager is a configura has configuration tool to create a process sequence for the, op for the operators, uh, define station orders, access reports as and when required by the management or the quality inspectors to analyze the output of the line. Under the quality, for the quality department, we also have created several interesting solutions, what we call as a QC DAS or a data acquisition system, basically a vision system, which is a handheld mobile PC, which is used by the quality operator to get the guidance of any process sequence, which he has to do to understand and validate the quality of the product. It's important to, to understand here that based on the image checking, the product is decided as okay or not okay for the next process sequence. An example of the application being used in the Dana line recently supplied by us for portal axle assembly. We also have developed solutions for end of line checking applications. Example here is a axle for ZF, a customer, where using camera system and uh, handheld cameras again, we are able to confirm the quality of the end product and its usage for future release for the production. Going further ahead, an important topic for this session also is Odin Maintenance. So Odin Maintenance, as the previous uh, product has, has three sub-products, Odin Service, Odin Documentation and Odin Tool Change. Odin Service allows the scheduling of all maintenance activities and guides the operator step by step towards the maintenance tasks. Odin Documentation brings the entire documentation of the facility directly on the production shop floor on the machines. And Odin Tool Change ensures that the setup change done by the operator is correct and every time there's a count or an inventory check of all the different tools which are required for production. So Odin service, as you can see here now, is a scheduler, a sequence of operations and a dashboard. The scheduler is basically nothing but a simple way of scheduling all the tasks for the entire maintenance fleet by the manager who will release the production or a maintenance schedule for his team. And the team members now, once they log in, get the, the activities for the day. And once they have the activities of the day, they can click on it and complete the activity, which will be reflecting as a green tick. If there is a serious issue which needs attention of the manager, it will appear as a red dot. And for the yellow ones are the work in progress ones. Once the operator starts the activity of maintenance, he can see a video to, which will show him a step-by-step -step guidance of how the process is going to be done for maintenance. He can also put in a feedback inside, which is a very objective feedback, like a numerical data. He can upload an image, which will show the maintenance manager after the activity is completed, actual work done. Also important here is our system behind will track and trace and analyze the input which is received to give alerts on its own if, they, if we understand that there is a significant deviation that from nominal. For the, for the management, all they see is a simple dashboard which shows them the health of the location, which is a compilation of all the assets which have been put in use and under the Odin maintenance. So if they see that the asset maintenance like seen over here is at 95.7%, which means the assets are looked well after and they don't have to worry about the investments that they have done. As soon as they see that the arrow starts moving towards less safe and very bad, that's the time when they know that there is something which is not going correctly because the maintenance activities or the action cards or the escalations are not being dealt with correctly and they can now decide to walk into the office and take a round to understand what is the issue and why there is a 
uh, why maintenance has not been taken care properly. Put in documentation now. So put in documentation is, is a very simple cloud-based service which allows the problems, which allows the documents to be accessed on the floor. Our experience in automation made us realize that the majority of problems are because the information is not available where it's required. Traditionally, with every assembly line, we are giving out books and booklets of documentation, manuals, troubleshooting information, e-plans, but unfortunately, these are not available on the site, on the machine shop floor where it is required. So when there is a problem on the line, a lot of time is spent and wasted to get the information where it is, where it is lying to the location of the problem. By using a simple QR code now and a very structured approach of uploading and stacking the documents, the operator now can just by scanning the QR code using his tab, he's able to access the entire information the way he wants it on the shop floor within a uh, fraction of seconds. He can easily categorize if he wants to see the electrical part, the spareware parts, the certification certificates, the calibration records, everything which is required for that for that machine is available directly on the line with him in, in, in a fraction of seconds. This allows the operator to now quickly identify where is the problem and also ask FAQs to get the right information immediately. Odin tool change is a feature which we recently developed and deployed because we realized again uh, that in production that there are several tools which are required for maintenance, for doing a setup change for different variant additions and there is unfortunately no clear step-by-step -step procedure or the way the tools are kept and the location is unknown. With this issue, we, this issue was addressed by us by Odin tool change. Here we are able to now guide the operator to pick the right tools for the setup change over, store them correctly, access them when required and again safely, safely store them back. This allows the plant manager or the maintenance manager to also know that there is no missing tools and, uh, and the fact that the operator who's doing the tool change is well aware of the process of tool change and also the quality checks which are to be done after a tool change are mentioned clearly. So some examples of some customers who have been using this successfully and how they have been achieved, how the, what all are the advantages they have achieved by using our solutions. So typically, for example, uh, the downtime has come down, which was initially 30 to 40 minutes to uh, close to two to three minutes because information is easily available. We have also developed our own IoT solutions where we have our own sensors which detect vibration, temperature and humidity. And based on this, we are able to quickly give uh, information to our management or the managers and technicians if there is an abnormality picked up on the line or any, any of the machines. This ensures that the machine gets attention way before the problem occurs. On the engineering side, we also have some solutions, which is a factory of the future solutions called virtual reality, where we are now using VR for design approval, VR for operator training. We have also developed and deployed augmentation, augmented reality solutions for design approvals where based on a link, we are able to now carry out design approvals for our customers globally without the need of any hardware and software. And they can access the designs on their phone in a one is to one scale like you can see on the left side. Uh, we have also developed AR for production, which is in use in production in Aurangabad in the Skoda factory. Our latest development is operator performance, wherein we are able to track and we are developing solutions to track the operator health which is a very important parameter for any industry currently by tracking his heartbeats and his walking steps. Based on the heartbeat tracking, we can now tell whether the operator is fit for doing a particular activity and also by clocking the number of steps he's taking, we can assess the number of time, uh, the number of steps he needs to actually walk to make sure that he is doing the process right. If he has a high number of steps, we do know that now he is walking something which is additional, not planned for. So keeping a tab on these two things, we are definitely able to track the operator performance as well as his fitness levels. Further going further, 
before we prove uh, we have insights like i mentioned for the management we have odin health for the training uh, of the uh, employees in the hr department for everyone odin line watch is a complete smart and on system which is used to display the real time production data to everyone without having being the need to be inside the plant we are able to access the information of the production on our mobile phones as well as on our laptops behind the odin development is a team of developers who are dedicatedly working tirelessly to roll out these solutions and several more solutions which we are looking forward to roll out to our customers we have technology partners who are assisting us to reach our goals and we are working on technologies like c sharp dot asp dot net ms sql server and javascript and these solutions are not just in development stage or they have been already been deployed at several customers in india as well as abroad some of the notable ones are mentioned here skoda dana tm4 cybernetic sharda abspecker zf dena dynex mahindra electric teneco audi the list is ever growing that is my brief uh, introduction into the world of odin created by jendamark i am available now for any q and a sessions for the future thank you very much thank you very much himanshu and i'm delighted to welcome himanshu here live himanshu thank you for joining us hello hello andana hi hi okay so thank you for um that really interesting talk and um makes a lot of sense let me let me ask you a, a few things um, thinking about companies here in india who want to implement automation or industry 4.0 what do you think they need to be careful about uh, i think uh, like i mentioned in my talk uh, we need to be very careful of not aping the west uh, the the idea yeah. of industry 4.0 yeah. was although uh, uh, origin was in the west but we have to adapt to our needs and our requirements and i think that's uh, uh, it's important that to not get carried away with the excess or the exodus of information that's coming our way uh, select carefully what you would like to do for your problems and not what somebody else's problems because one shoe doesn't fit all so we have to figure out our problems and find our solutions yeah that's a very good point and that echoes exactly what um ashish and meher said actually from thermax they said exactly the same thing they said look look very carefully about your own problem statement and focus yes. on one of those so Absolutely. okay so again the same advice here just be very careful about choosing the right problem and not just because a competitor over in the US or someone in some other part of the world um is doing something um a very different question now to ask you um you your organization gendermark made machines right that's what yes. you did you made machines and now you've gone into um you've diverged into making software why haven't you left the software for the experts to do and you do what you do best which is making machines why are you doing the software too uh, i think it's a very good question uh, it was something which we strategized after years of understanding what machines behave how machines behave and uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at a point we realized uh, that uh, it's it's core to our uh, philosophy of having something which is a value adding proposition to our customers in our own house uh, we we were quick to realize that uh, the solutions which we are looking for are not going to be readily available in the market uh, uh, to pick and uh, let's say drop on our machines uh, considering that uh, we did try some options before uh, in the past but eventually we realized that uh, what we want is uh, very specific uh because we understand machines because we understand how the machines behave and to bring in solutions to those machines it's something which we had to create on our own and that's how our journey began and we started uh, right from uh, hiring people whiteboard concepts to uh, clear uh, our own thought process of what kind of solutions we want and with our own team then we developed these solutions and i think 
uh, because we are not, that's that's what the main difference between Gendamark and uh, most other companies would be is coming from a machining background we added the flavor of software to it to make it a more complete comprehensive solution mm. so so what you're saying is that you decided that your distinctive competence was going to be having that in house as well yes. as being able to produce the machines you understood the language but then yes. you had to build your team and tool yeah. your team appropriately to be able to have those skills in house yes it's one hell of a complex process to uh, get software guys to work in our industry uh, because I'm typically sure. software sure. guys don't uh, relate to uh, machine bending machine machining work but i think we have got really yeah. an excellent bunch of guys who uh, understand that the value proposition in any software is also to see something being changed on the machines uh, and, and yeah. i think it's a we call, we call them a software automation engineers they're not just software engineers because they, they, they realize that, that uh, finally they're creating something which is going to cause a physical change in the machine. Yeah, yeah, I got it. And, and it's hard because you're effectively, you've got two languages. You've got the software language and you've got the machine language and you've suddenly got yes. to get these two languages talking to talking each other. To each other. Um, Absolutely. We, we, so hats off to you for having accomplished that. That's not an easy task. But again, with the kind of volume that we've got in India, that is the way we should be thinking because Absolutely. we can spread and, and, and get efficiencies and, and build on our distinctive competences. So great. Okay, last question for you. In your um, experience and your observation, which is the biggest barrier that companies face in their effort to transition to Industry 4.0? It sounds a bit funny to talk on the webinar this, but uh, I think uh, attending webinars like these and if, if they are too technical and if they are too complex and very high-end jargons are used, it kind of puts off the user to actually embrace Industry 4.0. And and uh, and all our effort uh, in the last uh, three years, two years, which we have been working, and I, I've gone out and explained to our customers to relate to their social and personal lives. Uh, and like I mentioned, like how easily we have embraced so many social media changes, uh, the way we uh, interact in our personal lives, in our, in our social lives. Uh, if we explain in the same way and not make it sound uh, very complex, uh, then only I think, uh, I think that's a big barrier that uh, people think it's not for them. And when you explain right. them right. and you go in a very simple language to step by step tell them that, and in the end, actually, when you implement something, in the end, tell them this is Industry 4.0 and not start with Industry 4.0 means you need to have all these things. Uh, I think you just, Absolutely. Just, that's yeah. how you, should, you must go. Just go slowly. Do not scare break them. Let them uh, break it up. Embrace it step by step. And in the end, tell, by the way, that was Industry 4.0. Right. Right. Brilliant. Brilliant. OK. Um, Imanchu, I did say that I wasn't going to ask you any more questions, but we have got one. Uh, from uh, Siddharth Paropkare. Uh, Sorry if I pronounce that incorrectly. And uh, he's basically, he's talking about your speech and he's saying, can any of these solutions be implemented in MSMEs? Yes. Uh, in fact, our biggest customers now are MSMEs. Uh, people who make uh, machines like us, uh, we, are, we have implemented solutions okay. for MSMEs okay. primarily. Right. Brilliant. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you so much for that, Himanshu. We have a virtual certificate that we will be giving you, but it will be flying its way into your inbox. Sure. But more importantly, as a token of our appreciation, we are going to plant a tree on your behalf um, to, uh, to say thank you for being part of Integrate 2021. So thank you so much, Himanshu. It was great having you on board. Thank you, Andana. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. And um, after the break, we're going to hear from IACC's Pune Partners, uh, that's Automation Alley, as they share their insights on how to get Industry 4.0 right first time for you. So please join us after the break. We'll see you back. Thank you.